Weblog founder Jason Calacanis has recently confirmed that XRP is obviously a security with detailed reasons to back it up. By the way, the Ripple CTO's controversial tweet about Stellar's co-founder sparks reactions as the XRP-XLM rivalry intensifies in the crypto community. Moreover, is it wise to ask the SEC Chairman Gary Gensler to stop protecting the American public in light of regulatory actions against crypto firms? Also, we will be looking at Gunnar Shades on BitBoy's move to become an XRP millionaire. Finally, Ripple had previously dispelled not conducting an ICO with XRP nor does it control UNLs on XRPL claims, but they recently resurfaced amid the ongoing legal battle. Now, we will be ascertaining if XRP is a security or not. Stick with me till the end to find out more. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP to stand the chance of participating. All you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP and the winner will be announced on the 15th of May. Jason Calacanis, American entrepreneur, angel investor, and founder of the now defunct platform Weblog, is the latest to assert that XRP is actually a security. The serial investor recently expressed his confidence in this assertion today while commenting on the expenses Ripple has incurred in the US SEC lawsuit. XRP is obviously a security, Calacani said in a tweet. According to him, the best approach for Ripple should have been to go and register XRP with the SEC as a security. He believes this move would have cost little and possibly helped him evade the expenses of the lawsuit. Calacani's comments came from a recent disclosure by Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse while speaking to CNBC. Garlinghouse revealed that Ripple will have spent up to $200 million fighting the SEC in the long-standing litigation by the time the lawsuit ends. Calacani's believes this could have been avoided. He said Ripple should have registered XRP like everyone else in the industry does all day long. This remark has elicited criticism, given that most crypto entities have not registered their native tokens as securities due to the lack of proper guidance from the SEC. Responding to Calacani's, Mike Belch, the co-founder and CEO of digital asset trust company BitGo, claimed that the investor's comments stemmed from an ignorant view. Go try to register a digital asset as a security before you make ridiculous statements like this, Belch remarked. Notably, Jason Calacanis is renowned for his angel investing capabilities, having invested in some of the most successful startups of the past decade, such as Uber, Tumblr, and Com. Despite this, some industry leaders believe he is uninformed when it comes to securities laws. It bears repeating over and over, the asset itself, XRP, is highly unlikely to be a security. Your job is literally investing. You should try actually educating yourself on securities laws, Jacob Franick, co-founder and former COO of Coinmetrics, said. However, Calacanis is not the only individual with this view. As previously reported, Lee Bratcher, the president of the Texas Blockchain Council, disclosed last December that he and numerous others believe that XRP is a security. Furthermore, in a recent development in the ongoing rivalry between the Ripple and Stellar Lumens, the Ripple Chief Technology Officer, CTO, David Schwartz, has taken a swipe at Stellar co-founder Jed McCaleb. In a tweet that caused quite a stir in the crypto community, Schwartz warned crypto enthusiasts to be wary of McCaleb, stating that the XLM co-founder walks around with a live grenade without realizing it. If Jed McCaleb throws a pen at you, run, Schwartz said, quoting a video clip where a police officer incidentally ignited a live grenade while in a sedan car. This tweet is the latest shot fired in a long-standing feud between the XRP and the XLM crypto communities. The tweet has sparked a lot of reactions on Twitter, with nearly 200k engagements, with many users taking sides with the Ripple CTO. McCaleb throws shades at the Ripple and XRP community from the angle of the blockchain's unending legal battles with the US Securities and Exchange Commission. The XLM co-founder quoted an update on XRP's latest program in Las Vegas, asking the SEC Chairman Gary Gensler to come in and set things straight. On McCaleb's tweet, CryptoVan questioned whether he, McCaleb, is feeling left out. Sarcastically, Schwartz replied, Stellar is always there for him. It is unclear when the two crypto communities started picking at each other. 
However, in a tweet last August, a well-known crypto influencer account asked the Ripple CTO what his biggest criticism of the XLM ledger was. Although he did not respond, McCaleb instead wrote, that XLM is a threat to XRP. The response from McCaleb clearly shows that both blockchains are at loggerheads because one thinks it is a threat to the other. While Ripple and Stellar are blockchain-based payment solutions aiming to revolutionize the financial industry, their rift is not subsiding anytime soon as both often fight for dominance. According to data from the popular market tracking website, CoinMarketCap, Ripple XRP has a market share of nearly $22 billion, ranking sixth among the most significant tokens. On the other hand, Stellar XLM ranks far below position 27, with barely a $2.37 billion market cap. Five years ago, XLM was among the top 10 most significant tokens, with a market cap of over $12 billion. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. Crypto enthusiasts from the United States no longer want the Securities and Exchange Commission to protect them. In a tweet on Monday, the famous crypto lawyer John Deaton told the SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, that, on behalf of the American public, we ask you to please stop protecting us. Deaton commented while the SEC chairman thanked other agency staff for their hard work furthering the SEC's mission. Deaton's comment came in light of the numerous hurting regulatory actions undertaken by the SEC in recent months against many crypto firms such as the XRP blockchain, Coinbase Crypto Exchange, and Paxos, the issuer of BUSD stablecoin and Bitrix that has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In December 2020, the U.S. regulator filed a lawsuit against Ripple Labs Incorporated, alleging that the company had conducted an unregistered security offering by selling XRP, the native crypto Ripple uses in its payment network. The SEC argued that XRP is a security because it meets the definition of an investment contract under the Howey test, a legal standard used to determine whether a financial instrument is a security. On the other hand, Deaton, alongside Ripple, has consistently contended that XRP is a digital currency, a software code, and not a security. Interestingly, the lawsuit between SEC and Ripple is ongoing nearly three years after, with numerous court filings. Recently, blockchain lawyer Deaton took to Twitter to argue that there is no legal precedent for determining that any investment contract case in the past 76 years has considered the underlying asset security. Deaton came to this conclusion after extensive research and considering the findings of experts like New York-based lawyer Louis Cohen, who recently authored a book titled The Ineluctable Modality of Security Law, Why Fungible Crypto Assets Are Not Securities. Furthermore, in a tweet today, Popular trader and Bitcoin proponent Nebraskan Gunnar taunts famous cryptocurrency YouTuber Ben Armstrong's alias BitBoy Crypto suggestions on how people can become XRP millionaires. Gunnar shared a screenshot of Coinpedia's recent article titled XRP News, Be an XRP Millionaire by 2025, BitBoy Crypto's Ultimate Guide. The famous Bitcoin proponent used the article to taunt BitBoy Crypto by highlighting the two steps the YouTuber intends to use to become an XRP millionaire. According to Gunnar, the first step involves creating a token. Secondly, Gunnar said BitBoy would sell his token supply and use the funds to purchase $1 million worth of XRP coins. It is worth noting that the article's content has no relationship with Gunnar's suggestions. The article highlights BitBoy Crypto's recent remarks, suggesting how XRP community members can become millionaires. Per the article, in order to become a millionaire by 2025, BitBoy suggested that XRP enthusiasts will need to hold at least 150k XRP, with the price of a unit worth around $6.75. However, Gunnar used the article's heading to take a swipe at BitBoy, who announced his relationship with a newly launched token. Now to the big question of the day, is XRP ascertained as a security or not? Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. Ari, a prominent media personality and member of the XRP community, has come up to debunk published claims that Ripple conducted an ICO with XRP. Ari's remarks came as a response to a report from Protos. The media company's claim that Ripple controls most UNLs on the XRP ledger was also debunked. Notably, the Protos article alleges that Ripple conducted one of the world's earliest initial coin offerings. This is the same claim with which the US SEC charged Ripple and its executives in December 2020. Echoing Ripple's earlier response, Eric clarified that the company never carried out an ICO. 
For context, an ICO is a type of crowdfunding method used by startups and projects to raise funds by issuing a new token. ICOs are similar to initial public offerings, IPOs, in traditional finance, but instead of selling shares in a company, ICOs sell newly created digital tokens to investors. Although Ripple sells XRP to the public to fund its infrastructure, the firm has vehemently denied that it conducted a single offering for the asset in the manner typical of an ICO. Moreover, ICOs usually involve newly minted tokens, but Ripple's sale of XRP involves an already circulating asset tradable on numerous exchanges. The Protos report mentioned that investors had to purchase XRP with Ethereum during the ICO, but Airy highlighted that XRP had been in circulation for up to three years before Ether launched. This confirms that XRP already existed long before the so-called ICO. Every other case in which courts have ruled that transactions involving a digital asset were investment contracts involved an issuer's ICO or other promise of future tokens. Ripple never held an ICO, never offered future tokens to raise money, and has no contracts with the vast majority of XRP holders, Ripple disclosed in court at the outset of the SEC lawsuit. In addition, former CFTC chairperson Chris Giancarlo argued in the past that investors who purchased XRP do not rely on Ripple's efforts for profits, a premise on which the SEC labels assets as investment contracts. Giancarlo pointed out that XRP is a token on the XRP ledger which is independent of Ripple. If Ripple were to fold, XRP and the XRP ledger would continue to function regardless. He highlighted that the network is maintained by autonomous third-party validators with no reliance on Ripple. A separate Protos report alleged that Ripple controls the cooperation rate of UNLs, insinuating a form of control over the consensus mechanism of the XRP ledger. This calls to question the decentralized nature of the XRPL. As previously reported by the Crypto Basic, individuals such as Justin Bones also share this sentiment. The recent Protos article also elicited responses from the XRP community who sought to address the claims made. Notably, the XRPL Foundation, which manages the DUNL, now containing 36 validators, is not affiliated with Ripple. Rather, the foundation is managed by independent individuals within the community. Community members also called attention to the fact that, while the network recommends UNLs, participants are always free to choose which one they want. David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO, recently highlighted this. So we come to the end of this video guys, if you enjoyed it, please make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible, let's get this news everywhere guys, if you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content, see you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.